know this is Mother's Day, but I believe we need to say something this morning according to God's Word. Everything's got to be according to God's Word. I'm going to speak this morning on the great true love. Y'all ever heard of the Great Frame Robbery? I think there was a movie made of it. Uh, the robbers, robberies that consist of huge sums of money makes headlines. Articles and stories are generally written about them. One of the greatest robberies of all time is going unnoticed right now. The truth of God's Word is being stolen. Very little is being said about it. But I want to say something about it this morning. A lot of preachers can build a large congregation by saying everything that people want to hear instead of saying things that people need to hear. Because I know this, if your vehicle is stuck on a cross on a railroad track and a train is coming, there's got two things going to happen. You either going to get out of the way or you're going to get hit. And I don't want to see people hit. But I want to say something about the great truth robbery. Now a thief is one who unlawfully uses the property of another. You and I as believers, we have great property. So let's go to John chapter 8 verses 31 and 32. That's where I'm coming from this morning. John chapter 8 verses 31 and 32. Then y'all had it. John chapter 8, verse. I love, I love, I love the Word of God. That's from Genesis to Revelation. You open up the Word of God, and, and the Word of God is going to jump out at you. Whether you're in Genesis or in Revelation or wherever you're at, it's going to jump out at you. But the Word of God says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. Now I want to share something with you. To the modern day church, it says what Jesus said several centuries ago, about 2,000 years ago. He said, Jesus said to those Jews which believed on Him, this is what He said, now this is for us today. If ye continue, the King James says, the New King James says, I believe it's abide, that means live. So to be a disciple of Jesus, and I believe this, you have to continue in the Word. And then verse 32 says, and you shall know the truth. And what's going to happen? And this is very important today for us. It's very important as Brother Donald is going to Shreveport for Brother Joy. That's where Joy's life has hit the road. Every choice and decision he made is coming now. And the main one, uh, like Steve said, that the one, one who's bringing the word, Donald just got saved. Donald had just been baptized. I don't believe baptism is saved. I'm going to cause controversy there. It's the blood of Jesus. And I, 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 I baptize in the response of a person's belief in Jesus Christ through the blood. Amen. To me, that's very important because we talk about a person's salvation, not to pacify, but rather to sanctify it through the blood. <laughs> but Brother Donald is going to share the word. And we need to pray for Brother Donald's safety because the enemy is going to try to stop him from getting there. And then to be receptive when he gets there to what he's got to say. But a thief is one who unlawfully uses the property of another. We see here as we talk about the great truth robbery, something stolen. You can't have a robbery unless something is stolen. I believe that to be a fact. At least I would think so. And when something is stolen, it's something of value. It's something that you work for. Or maybe you inherit it. It doesn't make any difference. If you inherit it, somebody worked for it. But something of value. How much is my, my salvation worth? Think about it. I just want you all to think about that just a little bit. God's Word is very valuable. Can I have an amen? 
Amen. We're talking about God's Word. God's Word is very valuable. God's Word, word is worth more than money. How, how much can you pay for someone's salvation? You can't pay one penny for one's salvation. We have billionaires, from what I'm understanding as I listen to the news, or, or trying to put all their money into whatever, the outcome of elections, whatever. I say, want to get on their knees and pray and let God have it. Amen. But before you can get on your knees and pray and let God have it, you've got to believe in God. You've got to believe that there is a Jesus. But God's Word is worth more than money. There's no price tag on God's Word. And I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful God didn't say, well, Gerald, for you to be saved, you've got to come up with 34 cents. And I'm just using that as a, just a, a round figure there. It has no meaning at all. But I do have to believe. And that's a choice I have to make. God's Word is of great importance. If nations and people would bow and come together and lift up the name of Jesus, then we'd see a change like we all been praying for. But the problem comes in is one group of people want to force their ways on another group of people. We see it in churches today. One person or one group of people wants to force what they want upon others. And it's not going to work. We need to get on our knees and on our face. Intercessor prayer warriors, come alive and start praying for the needs of our community, of our nation, of our state, and our church, and the people that makes up our church. Yes, That's where the change is going to come in on our face, not trying to force things on other people. Jesus doesn't force anything on us, does He? He says, come and follow Me. We have a choice to come and follow Jesus or not come and follow Jesus. We have a choice. When I was a little kid, Mama said, Gerald, there's no need in getting mad because you're going to get glad again. And you know that's a hard thing to say, but it's so much truth in it. How many here gets mad from time to time? How many here gets glad after they get mad? <laughs> so Mama was smart, wasn't she? Don't get mad, then you don't have to get glad. We need to be on our face before Jesus. Amen. Somebody says something out of the way, pray for them. Pray for them, that's all. Pray for them. Because the Holy Spirit is the great convictor. Amen. God don't need anybody convicting anybody. God's Word to do the convicting. We need to be in God's Word. This is my prayer. Lord, and, and, and I fell in so many ways, but I'm still praying. Uh, there's still time for me. Lord, let people see the love of Jesus flowing out of me into them. Now we're going to see people's hearts change. I don't, need, I don't need somebody to come and say, well, Gerald, you messed up. If I messed up, I know it because the Holy Spirit's going to convict me. And when He convicts me, it's a whole lot worse than when somebody tries to do it. Amen. Because when He does the convicting, I hit my knees. Amen. Amen. This will work, people. This will work. Amen. This will put your families back together. This will put a relationship back together. This will put raises on your job. Amen. When I work for time, thank you. I mean, some, I'm not going to get into Some of these people have big paychecks, too. And the bigger the paycheck, the, the more worried they are somebody's going to come and try to take their position. But either way, I told, I told the president, the vice president of transportation, I said, I don't work for Tom picking you. I don't work for you. I work for God. And that changed his whole heart. Amen. Because he knew if I work for God, I'm going to do the best I can for Tom picking you. And in turn, he's going to get the promotion as well. Can we apply that? We don't have to take anything. I believe this. As born again believers, as we come to church, thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I believe as we come to church, we don't want, we don't need to come to church to take from the church. We need to come to church and give to the church and turn everybody is blessed. Amen. Do I need to say it again? Amen. We need to come to church not to take from the church, but to give to the church. And when we give to the church, everybody's being blessed. Amen. You're being blessed. Everybody's being blessed. Doesn't it feel good to feel good? How many here likes to feel good? How many here likes joy in their life? Amen. Well, we're talking about the great truth robbery now, aren't we? 
God's Word. God's Word cannot be reproduced. It cannot be counterfeited. Somebody can come up with a counterfeit of God's Word and it sounds good, it feels good, and everybody wants some of it, but when trouble comes, the truth will set you free and a counterfeit Word will only bring tragedy to your life. Amen. Now that's the truth. Mm -hmm. We're to use the gifts that God has given us to glorify Him and to lift up the congregation. If you've got a spiritual gift, it's not used to edify you or glorify you. It's used to bring people to the knowledge, saving knowledge, and the help of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 The, the God, let me say it again. God's Word cannot be reproduced. It cannot be counterfeited. The reason for this, God's Word is the blood of Jesus. Amen. The Word of God is the blood of Jesus. You can't counterfeit the blood of Jesus. You can't reproduce the blood of Jesus. You can't counterfeit God's Word. You can't reproduce God's Word outside of what it said. Now you can make copies of it. I'm not saying that. But you can't reproduce what God has already written. Because it's been paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. And nobody, nobody under the sun can shed their blood for God's Word. Nor can they share their blood for your salvation. Amen. If I shed your blood for your life, I'll give their life for your life. But no one can give you eternal salvation. Amen. There's only one Jesus. There's only one shedding of Jesus' of precious blood. Amen. Now I might cause some more controversy here. I do not believe in aliens. I believe there's one world. I believe there's one Savior. And I believe there's one heaven. Amen. And I also believe there is one hell. Amen. Amen. Now I said it. I've been saved for, for many, many years. And I say this. God created this world. God can take care of His creation. Now we not to be stupid. We don't get out there and get an acre garden and go take 150 gallons of diesel and pour on it and then plant corn and expect it to grow. Now do it. That's plumb stupid. We get on our face before God and ask God, what do we need to do with that acre in order to plant corn to get a good crop to feed people? And I guarantee you, God never tell you to put diesel oil on it. That's common sense, right? We need to use what God has given us. The theory of Satan. Satan wants to steal all of the Christians' benefits. How do y'all feel? I feel good right now. Satan wants to, you can be saved, you can have spiritual gifts. Thank you, Jesus. And Satan still can come in and steal your joy. Amen. How many here can have spiritual gifts? How many here have had their joy stolen? Now you see what I'm saying? It's true. We're not immune to what the world has to offer, and the world right now is controlled by Satan. Well, up to a point. Now, Jesus has given Satan. Right, come on now. Ephesians chapter 6. Okay, we need to understand that there are demons out there. We need to understand that they're trying to steal. They can't steal your salvation, but they sure can steal your peace of mind. Amen. How many here has ever had their peace of mind stolen and you're saved? Yeah. How about the joy? Have you ever had the joy stolen and you're saved? How about the excitement of your salvation? Have you ever had that stolen and you're still saved? Have you, have you had have you had the great expectations of God moving in your life? God moving in your family? God moving in your work? God moving and all of a sudden it feels like it's been taken away. Amen. That the devil, the devil is doing a great true robbery in your life. Somebody might say, I'm not worthy to pray to God. Well, first of all, you're not. Who, ever, you know, who do you think you are that you're worthy? Amen. You're not worthy of nothing but death. But now through the blood of Jesus, I become worthy. Amen. Now here's a prayer you might want to say to you. Say, God, God, I'm not worthy, God, to, to cast this out or this out or that out. Say this, I'm not, but you are. So I'm turning it over to you, Father. Guess what's going to come back? Everything that the enemy has stolen. 
Amen. Right. Satan wants to steal all of the Christian benefits. First of all, he can't steal one's salvation, but he can't go about stealing one's benefits. You know, right now I don't know what things are going on, but but you know, you go 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 go, go apply for a job, and they say, well, this is how much you make an hour or whatever contract or whatever, and they say, this is your benefits. You you get to drink out the water fountain for fifty cents. Now I'm just joking. Back when I was back younger, I go to a restaurant. The, the first thing they do is give you a couple of a glass of water. I went to a restaurant and got me a poor boy's hand. They could charge me for a cup so I could drink water. I was insulted. But anyway, that's what they do. That's okay. Now I have a choice. Go back and go. I'll be back. Pay for water again. Amen. But well, it's okay. But, but you see, Satan wants to steal your benefits. He can't steal your salvation. I'm washed in the blood. My name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. What he can do is steal your benefits. How about this? He steals one's reasoning. People get so caught up in themselves, the only thing they can reason is themselves. Instead of getting caught up in Jesus, and then their reasoning becomes as Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. He clouds one's mind. Let me ask any of y'all ever been like this. He clouds one mind, one's mind with doubting and mistrust. He clouds one's mind with unbelief. You see, he's stealing the benefits that come with salvation. And I know I have power and authority over, but I'm, we're going to get to that in just a minute, okay? We see something stolen. All right, now. The great truth robbery. We see something return. Let's go to Malachi chapter 3 verse 11. That's the last book of the Old Testament. Now this, to me, this is very important. i got something else I want to touch on just a little bit. The last book of the Old Testament right before Matthew. Malachi chapter 3 verse 11. I've got three things going on in my mind right now. Right. It says this. And this is important, people. This is important. It says, how many here believe in the Old Testament? Amen. How many here believe in the fact that it pertains to us today? Amen. I believe it does. Amen. Verse 11. The Old Testament brings right into the new. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast the fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. People said, yeah, brother, I'm not a farmer. Whatever you do to make a living becomes your farm. It becomes your crop. Amen. But something returned. We see here, when we come to Jesus and turn our lives over to Jesus, He will restore what was stolen. God wants to give back what is rightfully yours. Now, what is rightfully yours? What is rightfully yours when you get saved and you meet Jesus Christ for your salvation? Jesus wants to return your benefits. Amen. He wants to give back what the enemy has stolen. One, when one steals, when something is stolen from someone, it is taken from us without our knowledge, without our consent. When one gets out of the Word of God, then that one has given Satan an opportunity to break into their house and steal their most valuable possession. Now let me share this with you. This is very important in my life and in your life. Husbands, men, this is very important in your life. Let's go to, let's go to Matthew 12, 29. Now this is very important. Matthew, and I want you to highlight that, underline it. Don't tear it out your Bible. Matthew 12, 29. Give me time to get another. Y'all ready? Y'all have it? Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first find a strong man and then he will spoil his house. We've got to be on alert. This is not a condemnation verse. This is the verse to show us how we can be overcome. Amen? Amen. Restore what was stolen. 
When one gets out of the Word of God, that, then that one has given Satan an opportunity to break into their house. To break into their finances. To break into their relationships. Get in the Word of God. And I'm going to read something if I can remember. Galatians 6, 9. Let me finish, let me finish here in a little bit. Satan is cunning. I don't want you to know that. I don't think Satan is smart. But he's just been around a long time. He's cunning. He's got humans figured out. You know, what turns this guy? All right, let's just say, just, let's just say, a simple Simon. What, what, did, what did it take to turn simple Simon's mind and turn it into lust? Lust is not necessarily in everything that has to do with sexual. Lust can be with anything that you put before God. It could be a job, a house, a car, or whatever. It could be your kids. Grandkids. Satan is cunning, and Satan knows what turns that guy on or what turns that guy off. And I'm here to share something with you. Satan is going to use whatever turns that someone on to cause more trouble than it's worth. Mm -hmm. Satan is saying, you just got to have it. Man, if, if I just get that Jaguar 1966 Jaguar a uh, 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 red or black exterior and, and tan interior with leather that smells so good that once you sit in it, ooh, that aroma just envelops you when you get up wherever you go, people can smell that leather on you. Ooh, he says, if you just get that brother G, you're going to be open up there. First of all, let's say I go out there and I try to get it the best way I know how, and I got to go to down south to the pick the hammer and go visit somebody in the hospital. I get halfway there, and that 1966 Jaguar that I just had to have breaks down in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Sure. You got me? You got me? Satan is a command. <coughs> He's cunning. Don't take no mind to him. Tell him, get thee behind me in the name of Jesus. And if you don't think you've got the power to do it, then say, Father, this guy or this demon or whatever is bugging me. I want this person out of my life. I want my mind back. Amen. I want my clear thinking back. Amen. I don't want all this past tense coming into me and smothering me. I want it out of here. I want good thoughts. I want to praise you, Jesus. I don't want People who self-conceited know they think about themselves and say, you know what, you just make a lot of noise. Amen. They'll go on about this. They're conceited. This. They're going about doing what they want to do above everything else. <coughs> and never find the joy that Jesus has for them. I want joy. Yes. I can go, I can go have a hair transplant. Now why in the world would I want to do that? I can go have a hair transplant. People so hair money and everybody touches my head. Oh, I look so good, wouldn't it? I might get a staph infection. <laughs> I am who I am. I am what just the way God wanted me. And I say hallelujah. Amen. Because if somebody wants to grab a hold of my hair to hold me down, they got a problem. Amen. Amen. Satan is a master of dishonesty, fraud, and sin. How is it restored? Well, we know that by returning to God. By coming back to your earlier possession. God says, return to me, and I will return to you. That's the hope that you and I have. God wants to restore one's joy of fellowship. There are many things that you and I can't control. By returning to God, this is important, by returning to God, you in turn are returning to God what you can't control. Does that make sense? God will do the rest. Therefore, you'll be restored. When a thief, we're going back to the Old Testament in Exodus, when a thief is caught, he was required to pay double. What has Satan stolen from you? Whatever it is, According to the Word of God, this thief has got to restore you done. So ever how much trouble you had in your life, guess what? You get ready to get restored double. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. That's Bible, Exodus 22, 4. Write it down. God wants to restore what has been stolen. 
God wants to restore the joy of your salvation. Amen. Don't you think that it's time to receive what is rightfully yours? Amen. Don't we think that? Heavenly Father, we praise you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.